Maybe I was supposed to say something. <laughs> Any early you usually report? go first. I'm going to look at you usually. usually. Any early reports on Zurich? Uh, not for sure. Um, not, not a knee injury, which is what I was really worried about. Not a knee injury. Um, something quad. Um, but I don't know the exact extent. Don't know how long it been. So it's a little early, but I do know that it's, you know, could have been. I think it could have been a lot worse. I say that, but it's we don't know yet. We got to get a lot of things checked out. You've talked a lot this season about how much deeper your team is this year than in years past, and obviously you've been without Jalen for a couple of games. But twice now you've seen guys go down with injuries. Isaiah first, and then Zurich tonight. Can you sort of describe what that's like for you and your staff in game to make those adjustments and change up your rotation on the yeah, fly? Yes, it's, uh, and especially when you're already, you know, now we started out with this many and we're, you know, it keeps going and every time someone goes down and Kendrick missed a game and Jalen's been missing games and Tristan's missed a couple games and yeah, well, I'm, I'll just say, I'm just so thankful that we, have you know the the talent depth that we have we have faith look at Stefan tonight you know I mean he just stepped right up and and gave us a humongous lift really kind of broke the game open a little bit and he's playing better and better defensively offensively you name it. he's he's starting to get it you know and and we need that but we need everybody uh, with Zurich's situation I hope Jalen's quick to come back um, the one thing it does is, you know, like where we were tonight, let's say without Zurich, without Jalen, you know, in our minds, we're a little less deep in terms of guard rotation. We don't want to leave guys out there too long. And yet, Tulsa went small about the last, I don't know, eight or nine minutes, which made it hard for us. You know, basically, you know, you're putting, you're putting, uh, uh, horn at the at, at the four the at the five, and that's pretty hard for our fives, and and uh, so so we had to go small, and so we're we're less deep right now because of the injuries and all that. But but we're in good shape. We're we're in good shape, and I'm just thankful that you know we're, we're, it's not like we hey we've lived through some way worse, <laughs> way 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 worse when you've got seven guys. So you know this is a humongous luxury. With that, do you have a message that, that you tell the guys after something like that happens? Do you let them kind of talk to themselves, an assistant? What do you, how do you approach kind of selling the guys in after watching a, a teammate get, up, get carried off the court like that? Yeah, you know, we just, uh, we just talked about it af afterwards. Like during the game, we try not to bring it up. We just, you know, next play, let's, let's not think about that. Not because we're not empathetic, but it's, <laughs> we're in the heat of the battle. But afterwards, you know, Zurich's in there, and we just talked about what little we know, and we're hoping that he gets back. And uh, he is a very tough kid, which is not to say that if he doesn't come back fast, he's not tough. But he's he's a he's really he's a hard nosed, tough young man. So I know he'll be back when he can, but not before he's ready. But uh, you know, it's uh, we don't we don't lose anybody, you know. And we, and we you know Isaiah I, that that one sticks with me almost every day. Uh, just because it was season ending, you know, season ending, season career ending. It was career ending as far as college basketball. And not just for your team, but just, you know, to be a young man. And little did you know, you know, that this tonight was going to be the last minute that you played. And that was a long time ago. And I don't think this will be the case with, with Zurich. I hope not. Although there's only, what, three games left now? Three? Come, come. I can't count well. Three, three conference, and of course, you know, postseason. But so hopefully we can. Hopefully it's not something that's. Or let's say it this way: it's something that heals quickly. You guys had ten turnovers in the first half, and Emmanuel said it kind of came back to just being simple in the second half and finding open guys. Is that maybe what you kind of? Yeah, I thought. I thought we were trying to get a Moody Coliseum record. Is what I thought. I thought we were. We were on pace at one point. I thought we could get like thirty-eight turnovers if we kept the way we were going. I thought we were. We're sloppy, geez, almighty, we're just sloppy. But you know what, I had a, I don't know if anybody else, maybe it was just me, I just had sort of a, maybe it's the weather, I don't know what it is, but it's just a little 
bit of an off feeling. You know, of course, the, the building was not nearly as full, of course. The weather's terrible, and, you know, I don't blame anybody, but I sure appreciate the people that came. Um, but it just, it had a different feel. Just everything just felt a little off, and our guys looked confident, uh, and yet they looked a little casual, you know, and it started really good, and our defense looked good, and we're scoring, but it just, even then, it just didn't have a great feel, and we just, we made quite a few turnovers that you almost didn't reckon. We haven't done those kind of turnovers. We had some, like, wild turnovers that, you know, and I just, it just felt like one of those nights. But I, but I will say this, I, I felt like, I don't know if the players felt it, but I, I, I felt a lot of pressure on, on this game more than maybe many of them for the last, I don't know, month. I just, because now you're down to, it's like we always say, if you turn the ball over in the last minute, is a lot different than turning it over in the first minute. You, you don't have as much time. And this is a home game, and it's a team. It's a, it's a, it's a game you need to win, and, and, and you're expected to win, even though they're good enough. You know, heck, they had us on our heels for a long time. But I think those games are can make you feel a little tighter. I don't know if our guys felt it. I did. I felt a little tighter in this game, and, and uh, I was proud that we, you know, hung in there, turned it over, things aren't perfect. Uh, Kendrick had been sick yesterday and was not feeling that great today. You know, a lot of different things going on. Zurich gets injured, and just all of a sudden you look up. I think we're up 20 or or whatever. And so I'm proud of that. And that's what that's what good teams do. Even when it's not going right, they figure out a way within the game. I thought our defense was really good most of the night. Horn got loose, you know, a number of times. He's a very good player, but we did a good job on most everybody else. How worried were you and your staff about your guys looking ahead to Sunday, a rematch with a ranked team on the road? I wasn't worried about that, honestly. I, I, I really wasn't because I've been around them long enough. They get it. They're, they're not. They're, they're mature and they're competitors, and that's a good combination. They're not. They weren't going to get fooled by hey. They know we don't. We can't show up on anybody. We can't just show up and win. We prepare. We've got tough guys. We we. We do scouting, they're locked in. Uh, we're way past that. I don't know that we were ever that way, to be honest. We just have a bunch of guys that kind of get that, that there's no room for, like, you know, well, we're going to give our C effort today. I, I wasn't worried about that. I was just worried that I think Tulsa is is capable of beating you. They proved they beat Cincinnati the other day. I mean, they hung 80-some on them. And, and I, we've played them a long time, and, and Frank's teams are hard to play against. That that matchup, and then man, or matchup, and little, and you just, you know, you don't totally feel. And that's part of the turnovers, by the way. They get you playing in a way that you're not totally comfortable with. So uh, I wasn't worried about that, but I was worried about the game. I, I was, I was worried about the game, but not because I thought our guys wouldn't be ready to play. What did you think when you saw Kendrick Davis running over to stand up for his teammate with 16 seconds left? <laughs> well, it's great and horrible all at the same time. You know, I, 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 I love this team. I told, I, I probably don't tell him enough. I don't, but I do love this team. I have a lot of faith in them. I have, I'm, I'm pulling for them. You know, really, I'm, I'm really pulling for them because they deserve good things to happen. If you're around them every day, you'd feel exactly the same. And so I have great feelings for these guys, individually, collectively, including Michael. Um, but I didn't like the play Michael made, and we were trying to, you know, I, I liked to, uh, it was not the, as classy a play as I think you should make. We have the game won, and we should hold it out, and of course he's a pretty aggressive guy, and I don't want to totally fault him, but, you know, then all of a sudden, tempers flare, and I'm just thankful that Nothing happened that hurt anyone moving forward, and that's, for me, that that was my concern. That's why I was far less than happy about any any of that taking place. But that's passed, and hopefully, you know, those kind of things won't happen again. Talked about weathering that first half storm a little bit. Uh, Marcus obviously was a big part of that with a with the first half double double. Just how I mean. You see it night in and night out, but he, he just finds different ways to. Oh my gosh! To, how good was he? The first half, he's just like make every shot, get every rebound, just unbelievable. I thought he was just fantastic. You know, hard guy to take out, but we don't want to 
you know, we don't want to kill him. You know, we, we got to rest a little bit. But he just really, I, you'd think at some point he would not cease to amaze me. But he, tonight he did again. Really, I was just like, wow, you're, you're really playing good. <laughs> you're really, really playing good. You've talked this year about the good feelings you've had about this team going back to the beginning of the season and preseason camp and all that. That said, are you surprised to be sitting here on February what, 23rd? Third, because yesterday was two, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah, two, two. And a baby was born. I was listening to the radio on at 222, on 222, or 222, 22, and was in room two. So that's just a little trivia. I know that's going to make your night, but I, I heard that on the radio. But anyway, I just interrupt your question. I have no idea where you're going with it. Are you surprised to be sitting here on the 23rd, that is, with another 20-win season on your belt? On your no, belt? no. I, 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 I feel really good about this team. I, I, you know, when you coach a long time, you just, you just can feel it. Um, and sometimes it takes longer to feel. I felt it in June. I felt it in June, honestly. We're practicing four hours a week. That's it, four hours a week. But, you know, we would get after a little bit, and I was like, whew, okay, we have this, this, this. We've got depth. We've got, we can guard the ball. We've got guys who can shoot the ball. We've got size. We've got, but most of all, and this is really what matters, we got a lot of character in here, and we got a lot of guys that will fight you to win the game. And I'll start with that. I'll take that any day of the week, whether you can shoot or whether you're this or whether you're that. But you got to have character meaning we want to be a team we're not about ourselves only that takes a lot of character and you've got to have a lot of competitive toughness not everyone is tough enough to fight through all the things that you fight through in a, in a, in a long season which is goes back to why i just it's very sad to me i've been doing this you know this is i've been in the game forever and when i was young and even medium young you know the conference races were were really that's what people talked about and then at the end of the year you start talking about the the tournaments and now it's just become god it's june and we're talking about who's in the tournament it's like the tournament is a who wins the tournament is a, is the team that got hot for a few nights and lucked out and threw in a full court shot and they were the tournament champion but 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 the real heart and soul of college basketball is the grind is the grind that starts in June now, and then it goes into your preseason and buying yourself, and then you go into these conference games and the hard road games, and the illness and the injuries and the and the the egos that have to mesh, and you find a way. The great teams, night after night, find a way to beat the other team who wants to win just as much as you do. That's the beautiful thing to me. I know it's not to the public because the media does a fantastic job of hyping up that there's nothing else in basketball except the tournament. I mean, who's in and who's out and who, but come on, the team just got high. We've seen teams win the national championship, ninth in their league. I mean, come on. I mean, really, think about that. You're the national championship, you got ninth in your league, and you're the national championship champion. But I love the tournament. It's exciting. I'm just saying that the beauty for me is, is the grind, and I can see that we have guys in June that are gonna to try to fight each and every night. They're gonna to pull together and they're gonna go through adversity and they're not gonna pull apart every time. That's that's what lack of characters, you know, for the front runners. There's a lot of front runners. Everything's going good. Everybody's patting each other on the back. Hey, what does the huddle look like when you just went on a 10-0 run against you? What does that huddle look like? Is that, you know, everybody pointing a finger and yelling at each other or is it, Hey, we're all in here, heads are in, and we're, we're figuring out how to get out of this and encourage each other. And I saw that in June, and that's why I really enjoy coaching this team. Speaking of fight and grind, uh, Sunday's game, uh, how do you take what worked well last time out, get it to work again? Do you tweak? What's kind of your approach? Yeah, my, my experience is... The game that you played before will have very little to do with the game that you're getting ready to play. It's like, well, you know, this worked, and he came on, he shot, well, now he's not making a shot. And then, then you know, it's, it's, it's just, they're different games. We will prepare not as if we didn't play the game, but we're not going to fall into the trap of, well, look, everything that worked here, 
that's going to work again. Well, probably it's the opposite because they're looking at the things going, well, this really worked for them. we got to take it away. And it's going to be a very, very, very hard, tough game. And I'm sure both teams are very excited to play in it. The truth is the plan will be taking place during the game, trying to figure out what's working and what's not working, and that's going to be the same with them. And, you know, both teams will try this and try that and, you know, just, just see who, you know, who's doing more good things by the end of the game.